So it becomes apparent that Mr. Banbala was pursuing his dreams of baseball greatness vicariously through his son. Uh, but the more important thing to get from that was that there was a hint that uh, we need that testimonial from the restaurant. And also that there is a trophy in the bedroom that we want to look for. Now this item right here, artificial plasma, this is one of the upgrade items. This one, uh, when you upgrade with that, it uh, makes the character more resistant to bleeding. And that's the one I usually upgrade with before anything else because I find, uh, I find that to be more useful, to bleed less when, when attacked. Now this is the Bandalo's bedroom. And if we take a look along this uh, dresser right here, we're going to find the last key item, the trophy. So we've got the bat, the testimonial, and the trophy, and these three items are going to uh, clear the way uh, to the end of the level for us. Notice bat is in yellow because it's one of the key items. It's not that bad of an origin as far as slasher movie villains go. And another another pair of dummies. Again, they're not much of a problem. Uh, we're just going to handle them the same way we handled the others. Uh, probably just could have escaped from this from this fight, but yeah. Just thinking about it, I do kind of wonder uh, why there are all these creatures uh, roaming the halls of the hotel and what Mr. Bandala thinks about all this. He said in his diary that he was going to kill everyone roaming around, but he hasn't done anything about the crash test dummies and the meat men walking around. Now I suppose the meat men, maybe you could say that they were the victims of Bandala, but that doesn't explain what the crash test dummies are doing here. So just used a bandage to staunch that bleeding. Probably didn't really need to because it was very uh, just a small amount. But again, you want to uh, get rid of any and all bleeding as soon as you can. Strange thing about this room in here. It has the last newspaper clipping, but the first time I went through it, it said nothing was found. So I re-recorded that. So, Mr. Banbalo has now completed his uh, transformation from jolly proprietor of a youth hotel to crazy serial killer to cannibal. Ah. Neat men love hiding in the bathroom for whatever reason. Uh, you know, something I was just wondering about, what is a youth hotel? I mean, just, what, did he rent out the rooms to teenagers? Teenagers don't have money. And, I mean, what would the teenagers be renting the rooms for besides the obvious? So I'm not really sure what the, what the point of this, uh, this venture was. Passy. It's even better when you keep it in the bathroom. That trap, that did a, a lot of damage to Eriko. And that actually was not in the trap cam. I just blundered into that. Uh, so we have to heal from that. But that's okay because we have all these items. And we actually have a lot more items than we're actually going to need to use. That's not going to be the case with later levels. Later levels, we're not going to have all, like all these tons of items 
uh, recovery items to use. Um, this level is very generous with its items. Now, this room has an item that's a little different from what we've been seeing. We've been getting a lot of items so far that have been reducing our heart rate. This has an item that does the opposite. The E-Roll Magazine. Reading it will make your pulse increase. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if your bleeding gets up to almost its maximum, Eriko's heart rate... Well, Mm, lovely. Now er Eriko's heart rate will begin to go down if her bleeding is almost at its maximum. That sounds like a good thing, but the problem is is that it will continue to go down below the baseline of 50. And if the heart rate reaches zero, Eriko will die. So, that so far is four ways of dying. First there was uh, losing all your health, then there was bleeding to death, then there was uh, getting your heart rate over 250 and now getting your heart rate to zero. So four ways of dying so far. Okay, now this is the enemy that I was talking about before when I said that there was one enemy that we might have a problem with. This is the dummy man. Not a crash test dummy, mind you, but the dummy man. According to the manual, this is the leader of the crash test dummies who was given life from his uh, anger at being used in crash tests. We can tell this is the dummy man because of his uh, abnormally large wrench. Apparently he used his powers to bring the other dummies to life. This uh, backstory does not actually get brought up in the, in the game, so don't worry about it. Uh, just know that this is the guy that we're going to be meeting a few times throughout the game. And as you can see, we're taking quite a bit of damage here. Uh, dummy man is a bit faster and tougher than the regular dummies. And even when you're hitting him with the bat, he may still be able to hit you back uh, with his wrench. And you can see that he has a larger uh, range with his wrench than the crash test dummies uh, do with their bare hands and feet. Now, something I should mention is that we can't actually use items in the middle of the battle. So even though I'm hurt here, I can't just go to the subscreen and use gauze wrap to heal the bleeding or eat a salad. I can do it now, but if you're in the middle of a battle, uh, you can't do that. Uh, so you have to be sure that your health is good before going into a tough fight, because what you have going into a fight is what you've got to work with. Uh, you won't get uh, your health restored until after that fight is over. Now, Dummy Man is down for now, but that's not the last we've seen of him. 